Hi everyone, I'm Luca Lorenzoni and I work in the annual energy statistics team of the Energy Data Center. Uh, today I will continue chairing the rest of the training. Uh, so this renewable session composed of uh, uh, an introduction, a presentation on renewable statistics and, um, and the exercises sessions and afterwards the, the hydrogen session. Uh, so in the, in the annual team, I've been responsible for collecting renewable statistics. Uh, therefore, I'm going to um, present this topic. So my, sh my screen should be shared. You should see uh, the presentation slide. So uh, let me show you how this uh, presentation is structured. Um, it is divided into three uh, different parts. Um, in the first one, uh, I'll talk about key renewable strands worldwide. Uh, then I'll show you key statistics concepts specific for uh, renewables. And lastly, I go over the structure of the renewables and wastes questionnaire. So let me start uh, with uh, a question uh, that uh, will be posed on Menti. And the question is, uh, uh, which renewable energy do you think takes the largest portion in total energy supply in the world? So let me switch to uh, Menti. And uh, as usual, you can, do, you can go to uh, www.menti.com and enter the code 37518080. And you can enter your uh, your answer. It's a single option uh, uh, answer. And um, I would like to focus on the on the terms. I would say total energy supply. Uh, what does it mean? Um, what uh, are we talking about? Is it uh, all energy? Is just electricity? Uh, there are various form of energies, various form of uh, uh, various vectors. So I see some uh, uh, answers, and it seems that uh, hydro is the is the winning right now with uh, sixteen uh, answers, but also solid biofuels is. Uh, is uh, chasing after hydro with 13 votes. I will give you other few seconds. So I see in the chat uh, that it was asked the Menti code. Uh, let me write it in the chat. Uh, 37518087. Oh, Okay, Audrey, Audrey wrote it. Okay, so um, let me get back to the presentation. So the winner is clearly um, is clearly hydro. And the solution is actually solid biofuels. So uh the majority have voted hydro but let me let me share why solid biofuel is the correct answer and you can see it in this slide uh so as you can see um the word total and renewable energy supply in 2021 uh the largest portion of renewables was uh, biofuels and waste and the larger the largest component of this part was uh, solid biofuels. So when we talk about renewables, the first things that uh, may come to mind are renewable electricity sources, such as uh, solar PV, wind, uh, uh, wind power, or hydro, which was the, the other option in the question that uh, uh, most of you uh, answered with, uh, with that answer. Uh, but the renewable product most used in the world is still biomass that is uh, mainly converted into heat, so it is burned, and uh, it is largely consumed in the in the global south for, uh, in particular, for for heating and uh, and cooking purposes. So, looking at uh, 
uh, the global landscape uh, solid biofuels that is probably one uh, uh, of the first energy vector that has been used by by humans is uh, is still the most used uh, around the world as you can see from this slide there are several energy products that have increased greatly in the last three decades uh, it's good to see that uh, the renewable space is uh, slightly higher than the TES rate, the total energy supply rate. And this is mainly due to favorable policies for renewables, um, especially for solar PV and, uh, and wind. Uh, but as we previously saw, the share in total energy supply is still 14.4%. And it's necessary that the renewables contribution to the total energy uh, supply grows faster since, as you know, renewables are key uh, for the decarbonization of the, of the energy sector. So in the chart on the left, uh, you can see the share of renewables around the world. And you see that Africa is the largest share. And there we get back to what I said about solid biofuels use in the global south. Indeed, the renewable product most used in Africa and in uh, the other regions, except OECD, is, uh, is biomass. And this is mostly a traditional use of biomass that principally means uh, uh, burning the fuel um, most of the time inefficiently and, uh, and not in a, in a clean way. Indeed, uh, it can cause uh, uh, serious indoor pollution. So in OECD countries, uh, biomass is less used and generally in a modern way. So for example, for, for the generation of, uh, of electricity and still in the OECD, um, in which you can see the share is one of the lowest, the renewables development uh, has been significant in the last years, especially to generate electricity. Uh, but the share is still low because there are still uh, uh, energy intensive final consumption sectors, such as uh, the transport sector, uh, that are still heavily reliant on, uh, on fossil fuels. So concerning the sectoral consumption on the right, uh, again, the green slice is mainly composed of uh, traditional use of biomass. Uh, the electricity plant slice is what we should uh, pursue to expand uh, uh, since we would like to electrify the final consumption sectors uh, as much as possible, consuming uh, electricity produced by, by renewables. So this leads me to uh, the final slide of this first section, uh, where you can see the world electricity uh, generation in which uh, renewables represented the 28% in 2021. And within renewables, hydro uh, is, the, is the most widespread. And solar PV and wind are the two that have grown uh, uh, faster in the last years, posing uh, uh, new challenges for the power sector management since uh, they are intermittent. So the generation does not always match the demand and they are often uh, uh, unpredictable. Uh, so moving to uh, the second part uh, of the presentation concerning key concepts. Um, as you can see, uh, renewable products are classified into four groups. Uh, this classification is based on the form of primary energy considered from a statistical point of view and how this form can be converted into another. So this is a very important concept because um, it um, allow us to understand uh, uh, what kind of um, uh, form of energy is present in the energy balance, so how we should interpret also the, the energy balance or a commodity uh, balance in general. Um, so I'll explain this starting from the first group, electricity only. And if you consider wind or hydro, uh, the first form of energy uh, that is generated is uh, uh, mechanical energy. For example, uh, the mechanical energy from the rotation of a wind turbine uh, that then is converted into uh, electricity. Uh, so from a statistical point of view, we consider electricity as the primary form of energy 
happens, the mechanical energy in almost all cases is directly converted into electricity. So there are no other outlets and the mechanical energy would not be of interest from a statistical point of view since uh, electricity is the first common marketable commodity uh, that is generated uh, and it's finally used by uh, final consumers. Uh, for the second and the fourth group, uh, the primary form is heat. Uh, for the second group, uh, uh, the production is considered in the form of heat because uh, in this case, there are two possible outlets, uh, heat that can be directly used, uh, for example, uh, using geothermal heat for, uh, for district heating or uh, solar thermal collectors for heating water in the, in the residential sector is one of the most common cases, or heat that can be used to generate uh, electricity, like uh, in solar thermal uh, power plants, like CSP plants. Um, the fourth group includes the heat that is extracted from the environment and uh, is used in heat pumps. And in this case, it's not possible to convert it into, uh, into electricity. So it is reported in this separate category. Finally, in the third group, we have uh, um, combustible fuels, in this case, renewable combustible fuels. So as a primary form of energy, we consider the fuels themselves and it's the only form that can be uh, stored. It's the only form of energy amongst renewables that can be uh, stored. And uh, here you can see um, the solid biofuels classification and uh, the definition is uh, at the center of the slide. Uh, they are all considered primary products except charcoal that is derived from the carbonization of food. So it's the only uh, secondary products among, uh, among uh, solid biofuels in renewables. There are some products that maybe need uh, specific explanations, like one of them is black liquor, that is a byproduct of the paper manufacturing uh, process. This is actually liquid, but uh, is conventionally considered within uh, solid biofuels also because it's, in most of the cases is used when it is uh, solidi solidified. So uh, it's used in a solid state. Then we have renewable industrial waste that is usually solid organic matter. Uh, so it is considered within uh, solid biofuels and the most common product is natural rubber components of the waste tires. And then, uh, we have another question on Menti, and the question is, uh, what is an example of how wood uh, is used in energy statistics? So let me switch to Menti again. It's still, it's, it is still the same code. Um, and... Uh, In this case, the question is uh, uh, a multiple, uh, um, sorry, it's not a multiple uh, answer, it's a single option uh, uh, answer. So I see that there is consensus around burning for, for home heating. So no other, no other answers uh, have been given. And uh, it's actually the, the correct answer. So let me go back to the presentation. It's uh, of course burning from uh, uh, for um, for home eating as uh, um, basically all of you have answered. It's clearly an energy purpose that we can report in the residential sector of the of the final consumption. And um, why not the others? It seems, it seems that there were no doubts, but just to go quickly on the explanation of why not the others, furniture is uh, non-energy use. And from uh, uh, the, 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 the third option, wood residue, residues burned in a landfill from uh, um, how is written, let's say you can't deduce that the energy generated from burning the material is used somehow, the material could be burned just to reduce uh, its volume and um, basically only ash remains and this is not, uh, this is not an energy use. So the, the correct answer was the second, as most of you have answered. 
And then in this slide, uh, you can see how liquid biofuels are reported in the renewables questionnaire compared to the oil questionnaire. In the renewables one, we report only pure liquid biofuels. This means that you don't have to report the portion of biofuels blended with oil products. We report blended products in the oil questionnaire. And here you can see an example in which a country produces um, 1,000 kiloton of diesel containing 10% of uh, biodiesel. Half of this product is exported and the other half is uh, used in road transport. So 100 kilotons of biodiesel are produced in the country and are reported in the renewables production of biodiesel. But the other flows um, that are trade and, uh, and the final consumption uh, concern uh, blended products. So they are exported uh, blended and, they, and then they are consumed blended. Therefore, they are reported only in the oil questionnaire. In the renewables balance, you will report the production of 100 kiloton uh, uh, biodiesel. And then in the transformation sector, this amount uh, will be reported under the blending with oil products flow. Um, in this way, pure liquid biofuels are transferred to uh, blended products. And this concept applies also to um, biogases when biogases are blended with uh, natural gas. This is uh, something that is happening uh, more and more frequently uh, recently. And then, uh, uh, let's say for the first time in this trading, uh, we come across uh, a section on uh, how to collect this data. So some recommendation on uh, where to find this data, how to collect them. So for the supply side, uh, data can be collected from uh, energy producers, uh, importers, exporters, uh, and uh, usually there are uh, fewer players on the supply side uh, where to collect the data from. While for the demand side, they can, uh, they can be collected from uh, households, uh, enterprises, uh, and uh, other players. And data can be collected through surveys or using administrative data. Uh, but very often, uh, an integrated approach is adopted. That means using the different ways of collecting data and making estimations where is needed in order to gather uh, the values for all the energy products and flows that, uh, that we need to monitor the uh, economy of, uh, of a country. So having a closer look at the different types of, uh, of data collection, surveys are the best ways of uh, collecting data since you collect uh, directly what you need, basically. Uh, however, they are usually time consuming and expensive. So it's difficult to carry them out uh, every year. And what is generally done is taking a survey every two or three years and making estimations for the coming years. Um, concerning administrative data, uh, they are generally data collected from governmental bodies in response to legislation, policies, uh, regulations, and these are more economical, but it's very, it's, um, it's very important. It's necessary to, to pay attention to the products, definitions, and inconsistencies uh, due to administrators' lack of experience uh, and um, expertise in data analysis. So uh, it's important to pay attention to that. Uh, then you can get uh, measured data, um, and uh, and finally, in absence of uh, data sources, you can make uh, estimations. Um, and uh, here uh, you can see uh, uh, an example for solar PV. In case you need electricity generation, but you have all information on capacity stored, you can calculate the generation assuming uh, a capacity factor that is specific of your uh, location and possibly the technology uh, that is used. So now before moving to the final part of the presentation related to the structure of the questionnaire, um, just wanted to show you uh, a list of data products published by, by the agency and um, I will uh, let you explore them uh, by yourself once you have the, the presentation. So now let's see the questionnaire. Uh, this is the structure of the questionnaire. And uh, even if you 
uh, don't use it. Uh, uh, for that, I mean, if you don't have to submit it to, to IA, uh, it can be still useful to cross-check the products and flows that we collect uh, with what you have in your database, for example. Um, and then in the questionnaire, there are uh, different checks, uh, automatic sums that you can adopt for your data validation. So I think that it's um, overall a good exercise uh, to, to go through uh, the structure to see all the products and flows that we collect because it could be uh, useful for, for your data collection in case you don't submit this questionnaire to, to OECD. And in the first table um, that is used for, um, to report the gross electricity and heat production, um, as you can imagine, these values should be uh, consistent with the electricity questionnaire uh, because uh, some of these values are also reported in the electricity questionnaire, even though here in the renewables one, we collect uh, uh, many more details for renewable products. So the table is divided into two parts, uh, the gross electricity production reported in gigawatt hour and the gross heat uh, uh, production reported in terajoule. So the producer are classified as main activity producer, uh, which are economic unit whose principal activity is to produce energy and auto producer, which are economic activity whose principal activity is not producing energy, but they produce energy to support their principal activity. So these are further divided into electricity only plants, combined heat and power plants, CHP plants, and heat only plants. So regarding heat reporting, whole heat production from main activity producer plants should be reported while in case of auto producers, only heat sold to third parties should be reported. And this um, uh, is what concerns the, the first table of the questionnaire. In table 2A, um, which is uh, the largest table with 13 energy products uh, listed across the top and more than 60 flows listed across the rows, um, you can see uh, basically the commodity balances of, uh, of the renewables products. The definition of the of, uh, of uh, energy products, uh, as you as you have already seen uh, in the previous uh, presentation, follow the international recommendations on energy statistics. Most products are reported in terajoule on a net calorific basis, except for charcoal and liquid biofuels, which are reported in kiloton. So if you see uh, the rows, this is broken up into supply transformation sector in supply transformation sector, energy sector, and final energy and uh, non-energy consumption sector. And final consumption is divided into industry, transport, uh, and other sectors, which include the residential, uh, agriculture, and, uh, and others. Uh, in case of uh, energy sector and final consumption, the flow uh, should be reported according to the international standard industrial classification categories. Now, table 3A, uh, this table has five parts and it contains very important information used for verifying, uh, that are also useful for verifying the information entered into other tables. Uh, the first part collects data on the maximum electrical capacity of the renewable plants. And if uh, electricity generation is reported in table one, then capacity must be reported here by type and size. And uh, this is reported in, in megawatts. Concerning solar collector surface, it is reported in uh, 1000 square meters and um, let me specify that does not include neither solar PV surface nor solar thermal uh, power collector surface. It's only about solar thermal collectors mainly using the residential sector to, to heat water. Uh, then we have the production capacity of liquid biofuels that is reported in, uh, in kilotons. Uh, 
per year. And finally, we collect the average uh, net calorific value and the density of the various uh, um, liquid biofuels. Now there is something specific for solar PV in table 3A that we started to collect from, uh, from this cycle, so from 2023. Um, basically, um, a typical solar PV system is composed of solar PV panels that generate electricity in direct current, so in DC, and uh, an inverter that converts the electricity from DC to alternate current, uh, AC. Uh, so we have a capacity of the panels installed that is in DC and the capacity of the converter that is in AC. Uh, for design reasons, the ratio between uh, DC and AC capacity can be up to 1.5. So basically the panel's capacity can be 50% higher than the inverter power rate. For this reason, we ask uh, the countries to report both the capacity for a given plant. So we ask to clarify this information with the data providers, and if countries do not, do not have both information, at least clarify what kind of capacity you are referring to, if AC or DC, when you submit or you disseminate your data in general. So this is a very important topic because, uh, as you know, solar PV is one of the uh, most important uh, energy products amongst uh, renewables, and uh, having a... Uh, um, electricity capacity that can vary by 50% depending on how you report the data, uh, it's, it's um, a topic, it's a matter that is very important to be clarified. So in the next table, uh, table four, give a detailed breakdown of production of solid biofuels and biogases. And uh, for example, solid biofuels is divided into fuel wood, black liquor, bagasse, animal waste, uh, other vegetal materials and residues, and industrial waste, the renewable part. Uh, the figure should be reported in, uh, in, uh, in Terraju. And the important thing is that uh, the total amount of production of solid biofuels in table four, so in, in this table, should match the number reported in indigenous production of solid biofuels on table two. And the same principle uh, applies to, to the biogases. And then in table uh, uh, five and six, we have trade. Um, so you can see in table five, uh, that is uh, where we report um, uh, imports by country of origin and table six that is for exports of countries by, by destination. And at the moment the products concern are liquid biofuels and wood pellets since they are the, the most traded commodities, but there could be uh, changes in the future in case, uh, um, let's say more products uh, will be uh, traded. Finally, this year we have introduced table seven where we collect uh, non-energy use data of uh, renewable products. Now, in, um, um, in terms of the flows, uh, the structure is a, is a mirror of the energy sector and, uh, and final consumption sectors um, for, for energy users. So basically we adopted the same flows um, as uh, in the final consumption sector, but these are for non-energy users. So, uh, it's good to clarify this, uh, this part because it was asked before. Uh, and uh, uh, basically uh, what, we wanted, uh, what we wanted to start to collect are the renewables that are used to replace fossil fuels, which are currently reported as uh, final non-energy consumption, um, which should be in the scope of energy statistics and thus reported in this table. So we want to collect uh, um, those products, those renewable products uh, that have been uh, used to replace fossil fuels that were used for non-energy uses. Because we, we see and we expect this trend in, the, in a decarbonization uh, uh, landscape. So during the energy transition that also for non-energy uses, uh, fossil fuels 
uh, that historically have been collected uh, also according to what Aidan said before. We want to, to monitor how these fossil fuels used for non-energy uses are replaced by renewable products. And some examples of these are like, for example, gas used biofuels uh, that replace natural gas as a feedstock in some uh, industrial processes or liquid biofuels replacing naphtha, LPG, lubricants in the chemical and petrochemical sector. Uh, as well, um, in some cases, solid biofuels used to replace uh, coal products in the industry sector uh, to produce uh, uh, dyes or fungicide, which are not uh, energy uh, energy uses. So it has to be clear that certain non-energy use of renewables, uh, especially those that are clearly irrelevant to energy statistics, like solid biofuels for furniture or construction or alcohols used in food industry, should be left outside of the scope. So only the uh, renewables that are going to replace the fossil fuels in non-energy uses. And here you can see a schematic overview of uh, the relationship of um, um, between uh, um, between renewables questionnaire and other uh, annual questionnaires. Uh, renewable questionnaire is a strong relationship, especially with electricity and oil for for liquid biofuels and also gas for for blended gases. And uh, as you, you can see, there are many links uh, between tables, and we use the links to, to validate the data. Here, I left you other links uh, if you want to explore more further the renewable statistics uh, and renewable uh, products analysis topic that I let you explore by, by yourself. And this concludes my uh, presentation.